okay so first of all I started off with a dot grid so the pattern itself wasn't really working for me I found it a little bit um, I suppose a little bit structured and I didn't like the way it was flowing when I drew it with the with the straight grid so in order to find a way to uh, be able to freehand it I broke it down first of all into a dot grid so the dots should be look they're not perfect when you're you're doing it by eye but they should be even squares okay then I'm just going to draw curves changing directions from one dot to another okay. these curves that come in between dots should be at the halfway point so here halfway it's a bit more than but you get the idea it's always a little difficult drawing at an odd angle to to get it perfect okay and finish this off okay so that's the first part now we've got to do the same thing but coming in the other direction so I'm going to come in here it's got to come again between that halfway point between the dots you can see that there's some variation in sizes because my dots aren't perfectly spaced that's okay it's just a process okay next row which is this one oops that's wall a too small that one <laughs> going to be an odd one there we go that'll be a bit of a weird looking one um, I also want to finish my outside one so these are going to be half the design because I'm you know I haven't got any dots to go to so just pretend there's a dot there okay and it would go sort of to there okay so these ones I do as like V's just guesstimating where they should go to that one can be a curve ones of the so they should be at about the height of the other curves now you've got to end your pattern somewhere okay so that's the basic structure I just kicked my tripod um, now to create the petals I work from the inside if, if it's a full one these circles will have um, four of these lines coming off them okay and that will create a complete flower I suppose for want of a better word so you just pull your strokes out from there to the halfway mark where these two curves join okay so from there to the halfway mark all right, so that's a completed one all right but even if they're not complete like this one's just got three I can still do them otherwise your pattern's going to look going to look odd oh this one does have four actually um, I'm just going to color those in because my circles look so horrible uh, okay so just keep going like that this one's just got three just make sure they touch Okay, so that's it. That's basically the design without any grid lines. Uh, where the grid would go, if you're finding it hard to visualise, that's where the grid would have been had we drawn had we drawn the grid. Okay, and those circles would be positioned. Where is our next one? 
those circles would be in the middle of each of those squares. Okay, so that was my first step in the process. My next step to create um, a little bit more variety in the design so it wasn't so rigid and structured was to actually draw random dots. Now when I draw random dots I don't work at the top making my way down to the bottom I actually work all the way around my page so that that way I avoid as much as possible having um, creating patterns without intending to doing things in lines because it just seems to be I know for me and I think for most people something that we just are automatically drawn to so you might have to even though it's random you might have to be um, actively making it random uh, to avoid avoid patterns and lines happening okay so the other thing to do when you're kind of randomizing it like this is not always going for the most obvious uh, connections okay so I'm going to start off here and I'm going to draw this to that circle there. I also approach this in thinking about the pattern a little bit differently. Now I'm not going to go for the most obvious one which would be this one. I'm actually going to go for this one. Okay, that's a little bit wonky. Um, if I didn't have such an odd angle I would prefer to have that as a neater curve. Now the pattern I'm sort of thinking about with this one, this is the completed Thing that I'm after and this is where it's going to be a little bit odd having to bring it in here like that okay so that shape is the pattern I'm trying to repeat over and over um, okay so my next one so you've got your two curves that touch each other in the middle this one is now going to form the middle curve of the next next one okay and I have to cap the tops across here like that and this one will come over like like that now sometimes in randomizing these things you have to maybe add in a dot somewhere to make it you know make sense um, for this one I'm going to add in one over here because this now becomes one of my middle lines and I'm going to curve like that and then I'm going to cap them like that so you can see by not going for the obvious choice and creating a bit of an awkward one there I've created a bit of a, a different shape you know which makes it more interesting um, okay so for my next one so that's I need to create that's like a capped top so I'm going to create two middle ones here the one here and I'll go for this one here okay so they're the two middle ones that's the capped top my weird line there and then there Okay, so that's it for that part of it so I've created my basic structure I find by randomizing those dots I end up with unexpected things because I'm forced to create you know some weird lines and things that I wouldn't have done if I'd planned it so now it's exactly the same thing we're going to work from the circle to create the petals but because we're not working with such a structured shape um, our petals end up looking a bit a bit different so they run from the circle to where they touch in the middle and I'm just going to do them like that so here's my four lines coming off each one should have four lines off unless it's an outside one and then to there Okay, so my next step in randomizing this pattern is to actually, or to, to do it freehand. Uh, with the dots, I still had a bit of a structure that I was working towards. I'm again focusing on this shape. As I said, this is what works for me, thinking that this is the shape that I have to create. Okay, so I'll put one up there for a bit of a reference. Um, the great thing about doing it freehand is I can sort of be as exuberant with my 
shapes as I want and I don't have to worry about crossing any of those random dots that I might have created in the previous one I can basically go wherever I want so I'm just going to do some interesting kind of lines okay so they're my two side pieces I need to cap them off The great thing about doing it this way too is I can go really big. I probably could do that with the other ones as well, but um, yeah, I find it easier doing it like this. Okay, so this top cap forms a side. So my two sides. All right, so you can see I'm going to fill my page very fast here. Uh, I might do one more down here. I also tend to draw, I've missed that a bit, but you get the idea. I tend to draw um, that whole stroke freehand if it's the first one. All right, so from there, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing as I did before, starting from the circle and bringing in my petals to where it joins. Super easy. I tend to do it in one stroke, um, you know, that's just like the way I like to do it. Um, I think I get a better flow if I continue it, but it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. Uh, where else? So we we'll probably won't end up with many completed ones on this size. That's a full one, that one's a full one, that's probably the only, or there might be one more. Okay, so there's side ones. And you know, you can take a look back, because you're freehanding it, you can take a step back, have a look and decide whether you need to add more to it to get the look you want. Okay, that's one more completed one. And that's it. That's how I went from um, turning it into the structured pattern into a freehand design. I hope you enjoyed it. See ya.